now is the winter of our discontent. Oh, my glorious son of I, this son of York. And all the clouds that lowered upon our house deep in the bosom of the ocean, buried. <laughs> now on our brows, bound with victorious wreaths. <laughs> our bruised arms hung up for monuments. Our stern alarms changed to merry meetings. <laughs> How dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim visage war hath smoothed his wrinkled brow, and now, instead of mounting barded steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chambers to the lascivious pleasing of a loot. But I but I'm not shaped for sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking glass. I that am rudely stamped and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph. I that am curtailed of this fur proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, since before my time into this breathing world. Deformed, unfinished, scarce half made up. And that's so lamely and unfashionable the dogs bark at me as I halt by them. Why, I, in, in this weak, piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time. Unless to spy my shadow in the sun and descant on my own deformity. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these farewell-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, injunctions dangerous, by drunken prophecies, libels and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate the one against the other. <laughs> and if Edward be as true and just as I am subtle, false and treacherous, then this day should Clarence be closely mewed up <laughs> about a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs the murderer shall be. Dive thoughts down to my soul. Here comes Clarence. <laughs> <laughs>